Morning and welcome to History According to Bob. I'm Professor Bob and as you can see I'm in my classroom but I'm not in my usual uh, clothing. Today we're going to do something different. For 27 years I taught Latin American history which was for the most part uh, early American history up through the independence movement. And I spent a lot of time having to deal with Eric Von Donneken's Chariot of the Gods book because in this book, which was originally published in 68 in Germany, he talks about various places are associated with so-called ancient astronauts or people from outer space. And one of those sites is at Palenque. And it's the famous tomb of Pakal. It's one of the great rulers of the, uh, of the era during the Mayan classic period. And so today we're going into the jungle. We're going to take a little tour of Pakal, and then I'm going to... Uh, uh, explain away one of Mr. Von Donneken's favorite pieces of evidence, which is the famous tomb, uh, tomb stone, or the tomb, tomb over the, the, the slab over the top of Pakal's tomb. So, let's head off to the Yucatan. Okay, before we get, well, this is, let's head to the to Palenque in, uh, in Mexico, and as, as you can see, this colored in region here, the red area, that is the extent of the Mayan influence. And here's the Olmecs. And there is indications today that there may be some Olmec uh, influence into the area around Palenque. Uh, this is a National Geographic map which shows, of course, the places such as Chichen Itza and Tikal. And where the X is, this is where Palenque uh, is located. There's the piece of it over in this area. It's a much later uh, power in the, in the Yucatan. They had uh, several battles with the people from Tikal over control of some of the central uh, farming regions, some of the swampy areas that have been turned into raised fields. And of course, here we have again, this is another map showing Palenque in relationship to the others. And you notice that I've had to print some in because of this map, uh, it wasn't deemed to be that significant. Again, it's, it's a much later city. It's not as gigantic or as ornate as some of the others. Now, this is an aerial view of part of Palenque illustrating the place we're going to go into, which is the Temple of Inscriptions, which is the tomb of Pakal II, and the uh, Castillo, which was called the cas castle by the Spaniards, and then there are other sites here uh, as well. This is a little better view of the Castillo. This particular uh, building, uh, at certain times of the year, this rising and setting of the sun will cast shadows in certain areas and glyphs, giving and making it kind of a, a calendar-like uh, structure. And then here you have a view of some of the other temples. You notice the, the jungle region that can grow right out onto this pretty quickly. So once these sites are abandoned at the end of the classic period for whatever reason, uh, they're, they're pretty much overtaken by the growth of the jungle. Now, here we have the, the main, you see that with the size of the people, the entrance into the uh, Temple of the Inscriptions, which is really the tomb of Pakal. And as I said before, this is Pakal II, who's also called Pakal the Great. Uh, he lived to be 80 years of age, ruled for almost, almost 60 years. And he's one of the longest reigning monarchs in all of world history. Uh, it was at one point deified by the local people as a god. The chiefs were usually considered high priests and could communicate with the gods as a result of various rituals. Now, his arrival as the leader of Palenque is unusual in that his mother ran uh, the kingdom for quite some time until he was deemed to be worthy of age and, and put in place and then continued to rule. So this is constructed as one of the few temples that has a massive tomb in the bottom of it. it used to, the, the, the old belief was that these were all ceremonial. There were no burials. In some areas they've been finding burials in and around them or whenever a new layer is added on because frequently that took place at the end of every 52 year cycle of creation. But in the case of Pakal, this is probably constructed after his death uh, for the way it is situated. So you see down here, you have his tombs, very much like what you would find in an Egyptian tomb. 
Uh, and then you have a series of steps leading up to the opening in the floor. And there's actually a tube that then runs up through the ceiling. So it's as if he's connected through to the, the different worlds. And if you went down into the basement, or you went down into the bottom of that tomb, this is what you would see. This is the funeral slab, which has caused all the controversy. And then in here you find you would find Pakal. Now you do not have to go to Palenque to see this. If you go to the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City, they have a full-size replica of it that you can see all of the artifacts. I believe the original artifacts of Pakal are there. Because they can't really protect them as well um, down in the Yucatan region. This tomb was opened in 1952 and uh, all the material was there. But it's been somewhat controversial uh, as a result of some of uh, Mr. Von Donneken's work. This is the view going down. Uh, in one of the movie versions of Chariots of the God, Mr. Von Donneken said the government refused to let him go down and film. But you as a tourist can go down and shoot pictures all you want. There are certain times of the year you have to be careful because there is a, a, a poisonous snake, the Baba Amaria, which happens that the natives call it like a two-step snake. One step on the snake, one step in the grave. So you have to kind of be a little bit careful. But uh, you can take pictures if you've got the right equipment. And then here you are, you know, people are heading down. They've gone down into the, the region, down the steps, into the area where you see the tomb. This is the actual tomb. And uh, it's not pulled back if they have it in the Museum of Anthropology, but that's what you end up seeing. <laughs> Now the premise of Eric von Donneken's book, Chariots of the Gods, Gold of the Gods, Gods from Outer Space, is there are certain constructions scattered around the world that man, early man could not have made. And that these are supposedly done by people from outer space, um, aliens, what have you. And in his book, and you see right here on this particular cover, what he has done is he has superimposed, here's Pakal on, the, on his tomb covering, and he's put this astronaut. And the, the book claims that Pakal could be an astronaut from outer space that was buried there. So I'm going to rip that apart here very, 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 very quickly. But one thing I want to mention about this, uh, I mean, you can, you can make fun and then do whatever you want to with these. I consider these type of works really good for one reason. They're written so anybody can understand them. Uh, when I first started teaching Latin American history, 60% of my students believed von Donneken over regular historians because he was better at presenting his point of view than the historians were in defending it. So you can use this as a check your sources, prove his side, let me prove the other side. You can really use it in a historical discussion of sources and background information and whatever. Um, you can't fault the man who sold, he, I think he sold 30 million copies of this book. He still travels around and does things. I tried to find a better picture of Mr. Von Donneken. This has him appearing to be a little on the crazed side in this picture, but when that's all I could find on the net, I wanted a color picture of him. I didn't want an old black and white one. But he's still, there's still conferences that, that he attends. Now this seems to be, we've been in Palenque, right? I've shown you some of the sites of Palenque. What in the world am I doing down in Roswell, New Mexico? Well, this is the UFO Museum in Roswell, New Mexico. And it's one of the top tourist sites in New Mexico, um, unbelievably. It's free to go in. My wife and I, uh, on our 30th wedding an uh, uh, anniversary, traveled into the West, and we drove down here, went in, and I was stunned to find this. This was a, this, this is a copy of the, uh, it's a wooden carving of the tomb covering of Pakal at Palenque. And while we were there, there, there was a family with some small children and they were being, they were reading all of this material, which is, of course, here is the astronaut laying and he's got his feet on a pedal and he's got tight fitting pants and he's operating levers and a complicated headgear and here's the rocket blast 
down here and he's in a cushion seat and it comes up to a point. Here's the point. Comes along, so you have your little rocket, and you have this flying bird-like creature that, you know, so that all of these is even more exotic explanations around the end, and I, I couldn't take it, you know, I, I I had to give the real explanation of that. My wife is just mortified because what we're expecting is for the UFO thugs to come out and say you people need to leave, but it's a free museum. So anyway, I gave the other side of the story. We survived the encounter, and they do have a really fun museum, uh, a shop to go into to buy all kinds of odd things. But I am going to go through this and explain it to you. Uh, there are several videos that will do this. There's one that Nova did where they actually went after uh, Von Donneken's theories on a lot of things. And in that one, they have Linda Sheely, who uh, 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 presently is, well, is now deceased, one of the great Mayanists. And I've also seen one with uh, Ian Graham, who is the, one of the world's foremost authorities on the Maya, uh, give the same explanation. So let me show you what uh, I'm making a reference to. Here is the actual cover of Pakal. Now around the edge are various dates. Their calendar is very sophisticated. You can actually pick out dates of birth on this, the day he died, etc. and so on. Then you need to have some sort of understanding of the symbolism. And the symbolism that you see on this is not just here. It's in every Mayan artifact that you find. Now the first thing I want to show you is called the Waka Chan. The Waka Chan is, according to Von Donneken, is the tip of the <laughs> spaceship. This is the tree, the world tree, or the universe tree. It's a cross-shaped device. It is in all three of what the Mayans consider to be the great worlds. There is the underworld, where everybody goes, except a few sacrifices and special people. There is the middle, central world, where man lives and the animals live. And then there's the outer world, or upper world, where the gods live, which are symbolized by the Quetzalbird up here which can be, Quetzalcoatl, it's not Quetzalcoatl here, it's Kukukan, or it can be Itzamna, it can be some of the creator deities. But this symbolizes the God's abode up here, and these little emblems represent different deities. Now, let's, let's start with the famous flames, which are right here. If you look really carefully, and you really don't have to be too careful, you'll notice that it appears that he's sitting on some kind of cushion. But if you look a little lower, it looks like there's two eyes and a nose and a mouth. This is the god of the underworld. It's the god of death. Uh, it's not Chagmol, which is the, it's the other one. It's Apuk. And you will find sacrificial altars made exactly like this at Copan and at Chichen Itza and other places. He symbolizes the lord of the underworld. And what you find is you have Pakal who at death is poised in the moment of imbalance between falling into the underworld and rising up to the heavens. Now underneath the, the face of Apuk, you have what appear to be the rocket blast. Okay, those are the beards of a stylized dragon. There are two dragon mouths. Here's, here's the mouth here coming down and opening. And as a mirror image, here on the other side, and notice that the points come up just below the neck of Pakal. This is the demon of the underworld. He is being consumed. He is being gobbled up. He's being drawn down into the underworld. This, this gentleman lived so long and was so special that he is actually appears in this particular glyph as one of the hero twins, which is one of two people who were successful in defeating the gods of death in the underworld at one time. Okay, now the next thing is let's look at his astronaut outfit here. His tight-fitting pants. Well, he doesn't have any pants on at all. This is a bracelet or an anklet. The foot is operating nothing. He has on a skirt, not exactly the kind of astronaut outfit that you would have. It's a beaded skirt. He is bare-chested. These are bracelets. This is a, a symbol of, I believe, Palenque. The little nose device over his nose is a symbol of death. And this headdress is the standard Palenque chief's headdress. 
So what you end up having is you don't have an astronaut on a rocket blasting off, heading off into the heavens. We've got a famous chief who's doing what happens to everybody else in the Mayan world, dying, going into the afterlife, but it's, it shows the symbolism with the tree and the, the universe at the top. But it's very difficult to get that kind of an explanation sometimes from historians because they have other things to do. And this drives me nuts every time I see a, uh, a show or, or some documentary where they trace this thing out and they go, well, this is, this is what it's supposed to mean. So uh, that is why I did this particular uh, assignment here, a little, little thing. And I'll show you a couple of other. This is the original uh, death mask, uh, which is jade. Uh, put over the face of Pakal, and his body was also covered with jade. Again, this is at the Museum of Anthropology in, in Mexico City. If you're ever in Mexico City, go to Chapultepec Park. They've got the zoo, which has the pandas, and they've got the, the archaeological museum. It's spectacular. So, hope you enjoyed that. Okay, I, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to be doing other uh, video podcasts like that on Mr. Von Donneken because the Science Fiction Channel is going to do a six-part series on, on, I believe, his life and his works, which means it'll be misleading a whole new generation of people. And since I've been battling him all these years, I just can't pass up the, the he's such an easy mark. But I will, I'll tell you this, if you can find the Nova show where they disprove him, it's really great because they interview him and he eats his own words on, on the broadcast. And so, well, you know, uh, um, um, yes, I, I was, wasn't quite right in this particular time period. But the, the thing to remember is this type of, of literature is very useful in presenting the facts. So it is the responsibility of people who know the facts to explain this to the next generation. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to come by the website, sumahistorica.com or historyaccordingtobob.com and leave a comment, ask a question, check out the CDs. Thank you very much.